Hey folks, well, I've got a SIBO C3.1 and this one's super unusual because it has the ETC power head, but we're going to go ahead and service this and uh, get into it and clean it up. It needs a spa treatment pretty bad. We'll see how it is after I wash it. It might need to be retrobrighted. Um, it's from the early 90s from what I can tell. Um, so let's go ahead, unclick this and get to town. We'll do the power head in a second. I'm gonna focus on the canister. Which again has all the stickers from an A1 vacuum. Now there's an A1 vacuum in every fucking town. Um, so you didn't know. So this is A1 vacuum and TNT's canister. I wonder if they're still been in business. Um, and if you ever need to know where your serial number is, oh, bag. Um, it's right there really kind of cool uh, and these old SIBOs they're they're really cool machines in fact the new ones are really cool they, those SIBOs are just cool machines let me go ahead and take this apart now I've taken one of these apart once maybe it's really unusual so we're gonna go ahead and strip this take this apart and give it its much needed spa treatment uh, right now the filter looks decent how about that? I bet you this one doesn't. It's all right. I mean, it needs to be dead. Needs to be changed, of course. But I mean, it's not. It doesn't look like they've been whoever owned it just abusing it. Seatbelts are known to take a lot of abuse. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start and pull the air belt off. That's always my kind of starting point with Seatbelt canisters. This is a replaceable item. It's meant to be a wear item. It's like a pantyhose material. <laughs> the best way I can describe it. Um, and this air belt. I'm just gonna pop it off. Let's see. This is where the machine exhausts out of. It's also where it's also the bumper, so that you can interchange it, and you can get these in different colors and stuff. This one looks pretty. It's all right. Should be changed, but it's alright. Uh, you can see what holds this bad boy together. Just these clips. Around now, actually, we're gonna switch to my better screwdriver. Yeah, it's pretty, this thing's pretty tall. You guys might need to go up there a little bit. Provides a better angle for everybody. Big thank you to our uh, Patreon supporters, all of our subscribers. You guys help make this sort of stuff possible. You know, anything from the tripod to all sorts of other things. All right, come apart. And you know, what the Germans they always hide the, the screws. Screws are always hidden on German machines, as they should be. So we're gonna take. Take the lid off very carefully. And this spring uh, needs to be reformed, so I'm taking him out. You can see that the hinge is interchangeable. Really smart thinking. Probably only one or two screws holding this whole thing together. Oh, I can see the brass fitting in there, that's cool. So, and I would bet there's something under these pedals. See which side these pedals come off of. Let's see if I can separate anything. <laughs> I almost wonder if the wheels need to come off. Again, this is a machine I've really never take apart that far. These were pretty rare here in the States. They weren't particularly good sellers. Excellent, excellent machines. But SIBO is just not one of the better known brands, unfortunately. People know Mila, they know Kirby, they know Hoover. You say SIBO. People just don't know, unfortunately. Yep. That's what I thought. <laughs> so, I mean, what other canister comes apart with one screw that's 
that's pretty freaking cool uh, to get in there and we're able to see the electronic bits and this is old enough there the LEDs really weren't commonplace so there's actually lights in here now once we're in here that torque seems to have gone away and we need to go to a Phillips number two that is interesting stuff all right I'm gonna start marking stuff. I see that there's a blue. And these actually might be marked somewhere, but be on the safe side, we're gonna mark everything where I where I see it. There's nothing on the K3 terminal. That's just something to something to remember. I'm not good. Just marking that, making sure everything is clear when I take this apart. Because again, I'm not I'm not super familiar with this model, so I don't want anything to get misplaced on a working machine. that was went into this machine is just freaking amazing. Oh, there's one screw hiding under the wires, all right? Excellent. You can see where the this guy is cooled in the machine. Excellent, excellent construction with thermal paste. Um, see a couple connections starting to get iffy, but not nothing too bad for a 20 plus year old machine. Keep on going to the. That's so impressive that there's a metal actuator level. So unnecessary. They could just move the pedal to this side, but they didn't want to do that for some reason. A lot of these older Sebo canisters, I've always felt that they, that their purpose was to just use the upright back to shape everything on them. Pull that cord rail out. So now we got to separate this. And I'm a little bit puzzled on how to do this right now. Looks like it just pops out. I think it wants to be manhandled. Mm. I see some connections there, but I don't see. And I see a, a door, but. I'm gonna give it a love tap. Let's, let's risk it. Give it a love tap. Nope. No love taps working today. Oh yeah, that's it's starting to work. No. Nope. How do we pull this out? There's screws in it, but they don't. You can't actually get to them the way it's built. You can see those in there. <laughs> I think. Oh, okay. All right. I think I see what's going on here. I do one side and then the other. 
and I stabbed myself with the screwdriver. That's lovely. All right, now the rest of this makes sense. This just comes out, fill up screws. Soft tap and there we go. That can be washed now. Actually, all of that's getting washed right there. Wash that. Yeah. Oh boy, let's see here. Let's retract the cord. You know, Seabo cord winders, I've never ha really had to replace one, but maybe once on a K series. They don't really go out. Sound detonating all over this machine. It's really impressive. The wiring is nicely tracked. I do wish to pull this metal gizmo out. Nope. Nice sound deadening. I'm gonna go get a heat gun, we're gonna release that sound ending. You don't want to give it too much heat, but often that heat will help separate this glue. Which, of course, in Sibo's case is not, not happening. They use some sort of super German glue, of course. But that didn't work. Well, we might tell this video about how not to do uh, this whole repair. Really sticky shit. Um, there's the cord rewind and the motor shroud. Super sticky. That's crazy. Unnecessary. Um, and I'm, I'm sure somebody at SIBO is going to give me a call and tell me why that's necessary, but it's super qual high quality vacuums, though. Even the glue's high quality. All right. So we got the motor, it's a Dommel, 120 volt motor. I'm sure you guys overseas got something a little bit spicier. It's really clean. Uh, there's some carbon dust, but that's it. Carbons look like they have good life. We'll check those in a second. I'm gonna wash these pieces. The little rubber do d dinghies all in here. Um, I'm gonna put those in the hand wash pile. Floor tool kind of needs to be addressed as well. So this whole thing probably just rotates out somehow. More rub more rubber sound ending foam. That stuff's not glued down. We are going to. Oh, okay. I see how that's all in place. Ain't that? That's just lovely. All right. So we've got like a plastic C clip. Bam. So that's gonna get washed. This is also gonna get washed, but not the cord rewinder. We want to pull this off. Actually.
Ah, of course that comes off nicely. That's going to get washed. And there's um, some sort of sensor or something on here. A switch maybe for the bag check. Uh, that's not going to get washed. It might get hand washed. Yeah, that will get hand washed. So we just wash here. We don't want to wash any of that stuff. So we're going to set all that aside. Hey, I want to do a quick video on taking off labels on vacuums and stuff like that. There's a couple ways of doing it. Um, heat is always a good way. Heat can help peel the label off and preserve the label. But this label here, probably not. Let's see what we can do. Give it a little bit of heat. And then you want to use a plastic tool or this, this is a micarta tool. I actually made this tool. Uh, for doing stuff like this. And you just want to peel it off uh, real nicely in one piece. But sometimes labels like these paper labels are just going to do this. Um, so the solution to this, of course, with these paper labels, since the heat really didn't help it, is a little bit of WD-40 goes a long, long way. Again, we're just going to use that same tool. Use the side of the tool. You want to use something soft. You don't want to use metal screwdriver or something like that. We're just trying to peel the top layer of the label off and leave the glue intact. All right, like so. Now that's on there. Give it one more. Water Displacer 40 works great for this. Yep, that's what DW40 stands for, Water Displacer 40. Get a little bit of help and wipe off with a rag. And we can see we got a little bit left. And there we go. Now, if it's not going to get washed afterwards, a little bit of alcohol never hurt anybody either, though you don't want to get get on logos and stuff like that. Um, so there you go, nothing sticky anymore. Label's gone. If this helped you out, please consider a subscription to my channel. Give us a thumbs up and like and share. All right, so one of the more important steps is putting your vacuum in the dishwasher. So we're going to put this in the dishwasher. And we just need to do a quick wash cycle with this one. All right, looks like the dishwasher is done. So we're gonna turn it off, open it up. And you can see everything is pretty clean. Some of the carbon dust didn't come off, but it's much nicer than it was. Oh God, how do I do this? It's a new day, and uh, several days later I'm putting this thing together, so got some new coffee here. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, I don't really remember how I took this thing apart. Uh, that's always a great way to start your day. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, I didn't wash the motor. I blew it out, but I, I'm still dissatisfied with the amount of... I don't know what grease is on this, on this bottle. Um, kind of dissatisfied with how clean that is so I'm just gonna wipe it down real quick best I can it's a big single fan single stage motor um, probably makes plenty of airflow um, I was just wiping down what I can it's just really just carbon dust not nothing big so the thing I noticed when I was doing this and taking this apart, putting it together, is there is a lot of little rubber doodads um, that I was less than careful to note where they went. So we're going to play where do the rubber doodads go. <laughs> um, this one's obvious though, the, the gasket I get where that goes, so we're going to put that together. Um, 
And as always, bring this to your local SIBO dealer. Don't don't try and do this this at home, because you might mess up just like I do. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. It's a nice thick gasket that they used. Now for a vacuum that doesn't doesn't technically have a high-level HEPA filtration, they sure did a nice job sealing all this. Putting a little bit of, uh, just to preserve the gasket there. All right, so one thing I noticed was the, there was this cover on here and there was a piece of rubber around there. And I don't really remember much else from that. So we're going to play and figure out how this goes in. So if you'll just bear with me we will get everything in place. And I'm sure there's somebody somewhere, um, you know, shaking their head here. It's a big arrow. That might be a hint, that arrow. Um, <laughs> what I'm, what you should do, or what I'm doing. Ah, all right. That's a good start. That appears to go in there. And these guys were, they were somewhere. So we're putting the motor back in, and I, I struggled a little bit, and I want to explain what, what was going on. There are these two things on the motor, and there's no clear orientation where they go. There is clear orientation, though, on the motor. There's this knob right here, and this mark right here where this rubber piece went. Um, Anyway, so that just kind of goes down there like that. Make sure your wire is not, it's not sitting on the wire. And that just gets kind of, you just rub it in there like that. Just kind of rock it in there. Uh, next, I would silicone or pledge up these things. And I'd like to meet the engineer who designed this, because this is quite ingenious how this works. So that floats on there. And then all that just gets put back together. Like so. And you want to make sure these things get tucked in. Like so. And there we go. Oh, and this gasket is acting like it shrank, even though it has not. So that's how that goes on. In fact, to settle everything, I'd give it a couple of taps. There we go. So let's put some screws back in. And uh, the other weird thing about this is, is there are a mixture of Phillips and Torx screws, which uh, I really don't understand. It's like they put on some screws just to keep some Americans out and then the rest of it's all uh, friendly, friendly screws. Because I don't know how brittle this plastic is. I am going to do this by hand. Probably most of these. It's not too many screws. Again, it takes a little bit of pressure putting this thing on so that everything's lined up. And I'd say it's by design. So all those rubber bits absorb noise and shock. Uh, Again, really kind of cool how they did that, but obnoxious to try to figure out if you've never done it before. That's, no, see, I was talking about pinching them wires. See right there, what I'm talking about. So our boy has to go up a little bit. is always really good about routing wires so just keep that in mind that everything of course has its place okay that's what that should look like uh, on there now that I've done that I'd probably upset the order of life over here So now there's going to be two screws right there. Bam. This will work. It 
Seems like there could have been a couple more screws on here, but there's not. Um, you know, the Germans are very efficient on deciding how things are going to go together. Alright. And the whole shape of this canister makes sense when you look at it with its cover off, why it's so oddly shaped. Alright. So we are enjoying that. You can see the motor is sealed up with that gasket and that those two wires are in place. So now there's a couple other things to put in place. Um, you know, part of the problem with, you know, washing everything and moving everything around, and it's just one of the things, is things go get put kind of where they're not supposed to go. And things get kind of unplugged and moved all over the place. This cord rail is still kind of dirty. Now, a friend of mine, he drops oil on cord rails. I don't usually do it, but I'm going to do it here and see if that helps it at all. So just a few drops of oil in there. Other thing that came out that I wasn't going to wash was this piece. This is what holds the bag in. I think the most interesting thing about the C and K series canisters is they use upright vacuum bags in them. They didn't actually use a separate bag. They wanted to use the same bag in everything. So the upright bag fits it. Really cool idea. Uh, not necessarily necessary, but you know, and of course they've shied away with that when they went to the D series and now that they have the E series, of course, it's also very different. Um, the thing I did not want to take apart is there's, a, there's a, like a little intricate switch right there, so I wasn't too happy with that coming apart. I did not want to move all that stuff. And you can see the bag compartment and all that. So what we're looking for, ah, here it is. Here's, this is what holds, when you're tugging on the machine, you're tugging on this by the hose. Um, and it, it seems to hold, so again, superb engineering with SIBO in terms of this stuff. I mean, yeah, you can pick it up just fine by that little clip. Really cool how all that interacts together. It's all just kind of builds on itself, it becomes more and more structural. So we got that in. Um, I'm going to mess the circuit board and the wires in a minute. We're going to put the cord reel in next. And again, we can see where uh, there's a self-vacuuming hole for the cord reel. Let's make sure that's nice and clean in there. And that's sealed uh, with this felt. I'm actually almost tempted to put some silicone around there, but uh, I don't think it's leaking that much air through there. Um, so this goes in there, and you can see how this gets oriented. And that just goes in this little slot, in theory. <laughs> do I need to uh, pull that cover off before I do that? Nah, that can't be. That just needs to be. Yep, that just needs a little bit of love when you put Again, there's places for the cable to be routed beautifully, so we're going to use them. Really a precise fit there. And like every SIBO vacuum has this stuff. You know, from the G to the X. They all have really nice wiring and routing inside. So I really took the time to make sure nothing gets pinched or out of place. Um, so the next piece that I'm not too thrilled about putting in. Uh, and that is going to be this thing. Uh, and this is the actuator. So in order to have both buttons right there, rather than 
doing, you know, what Mila does, where they just have the button directly above the cord reel that interacts with the cord reel. I wanted them both on one side for some reason. So this actuates that really, really strange. Um, actually, I'm just nervous that this is going to snap when I'm putting this back in, but it might be. All right, cool. So that goes in and interacts with that. Now I just put that in backwards, I believe. So that's got to interact. Yep. The opposite of how I would have thought it would have interacted. But again, this is really different engineering than anything else. So that now the record reel remote works. So we're going to get everything wired up. And then I'm going to explain, oh, I just knocked something not vacuum related with small parts. Uh, but we're going to, I'll explain how the cord goes through there because that, that was a little bit odd as well. Now, this circuit board uh, has this nice cooling gizmo on here and all this. And it looks like, aha, uh -huh. yeah, so it's using the vacuum of the motor to cool the circuit board. That is neat. We've got two little screws for that. Again, I'm a, because of the age of this, it's almost, it's going to be 25 years old. Um, And actually has light bulbs, not LEDs that go right there. All right, I labeled everything, trying to get this right the first try. And we're gonna put. So I believe that goes right there. And the blue. There. And green goes right there. All right. Well, after looking uh, at my footage, I realized I was kind of wiring it wrong, so I fixed that. And <laughs> got that all taken care of now. <laughs> um, Gonna unplug the hose for now. Set that over there. But that's that's something again. You it never harms to check if you can check the wiring and check everything before you plug it in and break something. That's always a good thing. So we're gonna go to this part, which I thought was really kind of weird, but kind of cool. You can do it right. Um. So this thing, right here, goes through there, and then this all gets clipped in. Before that gets clipped in, we have those guys that go in there, and they just go in like so. Ah, I mixed up the screws. All right, so the circuit board and the cord rewind screws are the same thread, but grab one out of here. These are shorter. So these guys, they go right there. Usually the shortest ones go in the boards, but not with this guy. Let me just switch the screws real quick and we'll be right to go.
I don't think it's normal to take this part out unless you're changing the cord reel, but again, because of this machine was not mine and I wanted to clean it thoroughly, we did that. All right. Now we can retract some of the cord, extra cord rewind. Maybe. in there. It is not wanting to retract. Did I do something? That's odd. That was like retracting very well earlier. There we go. <laughs> Lever got stuck on the wrong side. So there was one extra piece of styrofoam um, in here, and it was this piece. I believe it was randomly right there. Don't remember where that went. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I feel like it was almost on this side or something like that. Okay, okay, I see where it went. It did go right. I was right the first time. It goes right there. Again, all these extra steps that they put in here to keep this thing from uh, making too much noise or pinging around. Really appreciate. It. I wonder what I wonder what went there because there's there's nothing there. Um, it's very strange. All right, so before we put this thing completely back together, this rubber part, we're gonna cheat. And we're just gonna put a couple dabs of super glue just to keep it in place while we're putting it back together. You use Super 77 or silicone. All right, everything else looks good in here. Nothing's loose, all the foam was in place. So let's put that where that goes. All right. All right, make sure the cord's good. And now, with the SIBO air belt system, you have these clips that go in a few places. These are kind of structural, kind of important. Um, one goes there. And there's one on the side. I believe it was right there. Oh, you know what? You could put it. That would make sense if it was right there, but no. So that all goes on there. And now it's time to put the actual air belt on and the final screw in. Uh, so I've got, I washed this, believe it or not. Uh, a friend of mine was saying that he likes to replace these and I, I didn't see it really necessary. So curious if you replace these. Uh, or if anybody has any comment on replacing this versus not replacing it. Um, I have seen them rot, but this one was not rotted, so I didn't feel, again, the real need to replace it. Uh, oh, and all this lines up on these little, like, dots, and, uh, little, little clips and stuff, so it's pretty easy to do. And now... Once that's on, we have the other part of the air belt. And this feels like pantyhose or something like that. It's real weird, stretchy nylon. Uh, and it was a coworker of mine who started calling it that, and it just kind of stuck with me. Uh, I just can't think of it without thinking of uh, my coworker Steve. Uh, you can see that it's got one little tear there. Not super concerned. Oh. Yep, that happened. 
as to be expected. This is actually very reminiscent when you do this. It's very reminiscent of doing the, the Felix. I'm going to go ahead and put the last screw in it. Now, now I've got everything in place. Well, that was great. It's just falling apart. <laughs> One last screw. Done. So let's put the pantyhoe on now. Like, like I said, this is just like doing a Sebo Felix bumper if you've ever done one of those or seen that. And I'm I'm probably gonna order a new one of these. I just I just haven't. really cosmetic and to protect your furniture. And they consider this a wear item. We got our pantyhoe on, and then we got to put our pantyhoe clip on. And again, if you order a new one of these, it comes with the clip and the outside part. You have to order the inside palm separately. All right. You can see the serial number and all that. And we have this to do. You can see right where that interacts with that. Just gonna torsion the spring a little bit after years of being closed. Could not harm anything. All right. You can see why I wanted to torsion that spring. We're gonna put a little bit of oil on there and see if that doesn't. The spring's not strong enough for the door. I'm satisfied with that. It's as good as it's going to be. If you ever seen a movie as good as it gets, what if this is as good as it gets? Oh, well, that's, that's pretty much this. So let's put um, I also need to get a new exhaust filter for this machine. The intake filter looks pretty damn clean. The exhaust filter, it's just where I would change it. It's not, you know, it's not going to hurt if I run it one more bag with that, but it, it does need to be changed. It just goes in there. And it's really cool how all this interlocks uh, with this model. I've always thought that that was neat. And just to preserve this gasket, we're going to wipe it down with pledge. See how clean all that got. And I, I'm going to get a HEPA bag for this. Uh, I just I just need to go get them. In fact, I might do that uh might do that on Tuesday, we'll see. So we got all these marks, and that's that's where uh, I'm not satisfied with the machine. So we're going to try and remove these marks. Put some polish on it, get it nice and shiny. I'm uh, kind of torn with the idea of retro grinding this uh, after seeing some of Hoover Lux's videos and how well some of that stuff turned out. Um, and you can see where some of this stuff is really just aged with different colors, even the petals, just different. Completely different colors for some reason. Um, 
And one thing while I was playing this off, I noticed that's from the X1. That's the same bag handle I used on the upright. That's amazing. The reuse of parts between all the SIBOs is just always amazing. Um, I think Oryx is the only other company I can think of that really does that. Um, I'm not too concerned about the wheels. Wheels give them just a drop of some kosher lubricant. Because I did, wa did wash them. I did pull out some animal hair from one of the wheels. Of, and that, we're good. Right. That is the canister part of the restoration. Let's give everything a test run, make sure it's working properly uh, before we send it off into the world. There's a light that turns on when the bag is full. The green light for operating worked on this. Um, and uh, we've got the covers, everything's cleaned up. It's good to go. Well, thanks for watching this video. And if you like videos like this, definitely check out our Patreon page and the rest of the YouTube channel. Consider a subscription. And uh, we do almost daily upgrade updates on Instagram, so go check us out there. Have a wonderful day.